Today we're going to make a fun little sparkler show by blasting titanium with glass. Why does that? I don't know, but we'll do a bunch of other pen finishing as well. I want most surfaces of the pocket clips to be satin. I want the inside to look machined, so I leave it like that. Um, that's 3D machined directly off the mill, um, which is why I put a lot of focus into trying to get that surface perfect, because I don't touch it at all. Um, I just clean it, that's it. Um, so however you see it is how it came off the machine. But all the other surfaces, I want them to have a nice brushed finish to match the pen, which means I have to hand brush all the surfaces. I also want the chamfers and everything to still be nice and sharp. Um, so I put a granite plate down, put some abrasive paper on top, and uh, wet sand to my heart's content uh, until I get the finish looking the way I want it to. I do this with all the parts, even though some are going to be tumbled and some are going to be blasted. Because like I said, I want to hold those sharp chamfers um, and nice tight corners and if you tumble those long enough to take all that, all those tooling marks off, um, you start rounding over corners and it's not what I like. So this is just, this is purely a visual thing. Um, I could shave time here if I wasn't so concerned about making it look pretty, but I mean, you're spending a decent amount of money on a fairly fancy pen, so I want it to look pretty. Getting my machining strategies better has helped significantly in this process as well. Same goes for the end caps. Um, I do the tips, the, uh, the, the backside and front side. Um, they come really good off the hardage. I probably don't have to do this anymore, um, but it's just, it's one of those things. It just, it blends perfectly. It looks better in anodizing if the whole pen has been brushed. And I do that in that stage because once again, I don't want to round over corners. I want chamfers to be sharp. Um, those don't get touched. Just the flat surfaces get a satin finish. Once that's done, or actually that's as that's being done, um, I put all the pens in the ultrasonic for the first clean. The ultrasonic tank is gross right now. I'm using that new um, Alkanox cleaner, which I love. It takes all the oil off the pens, and that's all it's doing in this stage. It's just, this is just a rough clean um, to get them all ready for finishing, so I'm not pushing more oil into a finer grain structure. Um, and then once I'm ready for the final clean, I'll dump the ultrasonic tank and put fresh in there. While I could use like um, containers in containers so I don't contaminate my ultrasonic bath, I don't care. Um, for the price of the cleaner and the price of distilled water, I'll just change out the water in the tank and then I can use the entire tank volume. Um, just It works out faster in my, in my case. I have little 3D printed jigs that hold all the pen parts um, and keep them from rumbling into each other during the ultrasonic, um, especially on some of the satin finishes, um, just having the parts loose. Um, under ultrasonic, they can bump into each other and kind of cause minor scratching. A few moments later. Once the parts come out of the ultrasonic, um, they're fairly hot. This is 50 degrees Celsius is where I run my ultrasonic at. Um, I'm gonna dunk them all in just uh, regular water right now, just plain hot water um, to get most of the cleaner off. That Alkanox cleaner works great for taking oil, but it also takes oil off your hands stupidly well and it makes them really dry. So um, I just wanna get rid of that as fast as I can. The thumb studs, I put them in a little basket like this and just clean them all in one go. I actually missed the video of it, so you'll just see me right now pulling the thumb studs out of the ultrasonic, um, but they're all nice and clean. Once again, these will go through a final cleaning process with nice clean solvent in the tank, um, but this is just to, just so I'm not handling oily parts. It, it's so annoying to handle oily parts. I love the finishes, I love the tool life, but ugh, oil on your hands is so annoying. These little printed trays also allow me to keep all the pen parts together. Since the end caps are clocked to the bodies, I have to keep them in order, so if I drop one of those, it's a bad day. Um, so I really try not to drop them. There's something nice about seeing parts all lined up, just pleases my brain. These little printed jigs have been working amazing, they're just printed in ABS. Um, I thought I would roast through these, I didn't think they would survive in the ultrasonic very long, but yeah, they've been holding up just fine. Next we're going to blast these sliders, um, so here is just some flexible filament, this is some old 3mm, and I'm using it to mask off the threads. In the past I used sacrificial thumb studs, but it's just relatively annoying because putting them in and taking them out is a lot of turning <laughs> and uh, holding them in the blasting cabinet is annoying as well. So I thought if I use this, um, I could make a little kind of like a little popsicle stick for them and then I'd easily be able to hold them and blast them faster. So here's me experimenting with different ways to get those little um, pieces of rubber into all the threaded holes. Turns out just screwing them in by hand is the fastest and then to get them out, you can just pull on them. So um, yeah, that should save me a bunch of time. Bring them down to my kill room, my old little uh, my old little shop down in my basement. I like to keep all the abrasive stuff away from the uh, machine, so it lives down here in a nice sealed little room. And uh, hold a little popsicle stick and spin the parts away. This is like my favorite thing with titanium. It's like one of the only materials when you blast it with glass, you get this neat like sparkler effect. I don't exactly know why. I mean, I guess you're ablating enough titanium that it's burning in the air, but yeah, it's really cool. You can like blast steel all day long, you don't get this effect. But titanium, you get it all the time. 
Anyways, the little popsicle sticks worked out really well. Uh, let me spin the parts. I could probably have a little basket of them in there so I would, you know, avoid having to open and close the door a million times. I also experimented putting them all into like a, a container and blasting them all at once and kind of letting them self-agitate. But they bang into each other and you don't get as nice of a finish. And this is crucial to making sure the pen feels well. So I don't mind doing these one by one because like it's literally the one component that can make or break the way the cycle feels. And I want the, uh, I want the pens to cycle really, really smooth. I also need to lift that lift that blasting cabinet. It's a little bit low. I'm the I'm the hunchback there. I lifted it once, but obviously not not high enough. You you notice these things on video. I don't notice them when I'm doing it, but in, on video I do. Here we can pull out all the little thread guard spacer things, um, which is so much easier than unscrewing my little sacrificial guards and uh, put them in the same trays. Pop them in the ultrasonic, give them a clean, and uh, they'll be ready to go as well. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Take care.